Following Jesus' birth in Bethlehem with some limited time down in Egypt, the family trips to Jerusalem to worship at the temple. The remainder of the, the first 30 years of Jesus' life, we don't know a great deal about. But we know that he spent them in Nazareth, the place where Joseph, his earthly father figure, and Mary lived. It's likely that Jesus had taken up the trade of his earthly father. He talks about Joseph being a carpenter. Some debate has arisen over the past few years as to whether it was a carpenter or a mason, but either way, it was in a building trade. And so he was living his life there in Nazareth, and suddenly, for some reason, he felt led to go and search for his cousin, John. And we know a little bit about John. John was down at the Jordan River baptizing folks that were coming out from all over the countryside to, to hear his message of fire and brimstone, so to speak. Calling the people to repent from their sins, to turn around, to go in a new direction. And then baptizing them there in the River Jordan. And when Jesus found John, he came to John and asked John to baptize him, and John did. He didn't want to, we're told in other places. Saying that he was unworthy so much as to even untie this cousin of his shoes. But Jesus was baptized, and immediately when he came out of the water, we're told about this voice that came from heaven, how the heavens split open, and like a dove, the, the Spirit of God descended on Jesus, and, and the voice declaring that Jesus was the Son with whom the Father is well pleased. And then immediately they went out, and they sat down at the local cafeteria and had lunch. That's not in there, is it? No, no, I'm sorry. No, immediately the Spirit led Jesus of all places out into the wilderness. where he spent 40 days. Children didn't seem to know a whole lot about wildernesses this morning, which I think is a good thing. And something that seems to come along with life as we go through this journey of life, we find ourselves from time to time in wilderness places. Places that we are taken and didn't really choose to go there. And yet for this wilderness journey that Jesus was on for those 40 days, I think that he was affirmed in what his calling was going to be. It was not going to be a life of privilege as the world defined privilege. It was going to be a life of servanthood. And it was going to be filled with rough places, tough places, difficult places, situations, and circumstances. I get the feeling that Jesus probably had a call to this position early on in his life. You remember the trip that Mary and Joseph and Jesus took down to Jerusalem, and they were there at the temple, and... Mary and Joseph headed on back to Nazareth, and Jesus stayed behind.
They'd gone two days away before they even missed the boy. But that's not so unusual either because folks usually traveled in groups when they made trips like that. And so there was probably a whole group of people and they probably figured Jesus was off with the rest of the kids somewhere doing something until they got to asking around and nobody had seen him. And so they went back to Jerusalem and the last place they looked was where they should have looked earlier on. Where did they find him? Where did they find him? (laughs) And what did he say he was doing there? His father's business. And so I think this wilderness experience for Jesus was an affirmation that he was indeed to be about his father's business, which his father's business was to do something, to reclaim this lost creation. A creation that had been caught up in the wiles of the devil, so to speak. And so his wilderness experience was a time for Jesus to, set, to, to, to be alone, perhaps, with God and also to to clarify for himself the things that he would be looking at as he followed his journey to fulfill his calling as God's son with whom God would and was well pleased. But it wasn't going to be an easy task. If you get to thinking about it and you think back a little bit further, you kind of wonder, did Jesus' wilderness journey ever end? (laughs) Satan surely didn't stop his temptation of Jesus. All the rest of his ministry... Everywhere that he went, Jesus encountered some kind of a opposition, some kind of a, well, some kind of an effort to overcome the adversary, which is what the word Satan actually means. It means adversary. It was not an easy life. It was a, it was a wilderness life that Jesus was on. Now, he had some good moments in the, that time. And, but even when he, with his own disciples, he had a difficult time in, in getting them to understand what it was to be one of his disciples, that it was a call to, to deny themselves, to take up their cross, and to follow him. And they scratched their head, and what is all this stuff about a cross and self-denial? And they blew it. As I suspect we have blown it a time or two. in our attempts to be his disciples. I certainly know that I have. And the thought of that pains me. At the very core of my being. But the good news is that Jesus came that he might redeem the brokenness of the world in which we live. He he came to to bring us out of those kinds of wilderness experiences. And there's all kinds of wilderness experiences that that we face in in a lifetime. It 
everything from brokenness and relationships to devastating illness to injury to a kid with a AK-47 walking into a high school and just blowing people away. And I may not be liked for this, but because our country is too chicken to do anything about any form of gun control. And that may not be a popular view, but it's, I don't know when we'll ever learn that you can't give a gun to just anybody. And yet Jesus came to redeem this broken world. Now I know the Bible tells us that there's no tears in heaven, but I can't help but wonder how many times Jesus has cried when he looks at what we have done and left undone and are doing and not doing. So often because we view people as objects rather than as being people. And the adversary laughs. The season of Lent provides us with an opportunity for us to do some soul searching. It's about more than giving up chocolate or candy or things like that. It's about taking seriously our walk with the risen Christ. Even in the midst of our wilderness. So I pray for all of us that as we make this 40 day journey. By the way, Sundays are in Lent. They're not part of Lent. Every Sunday is considered to be a little Easter. But in this season of Lent, maybe we can find some way, some means, some voice, some experience that we should be able to express something of the goodness of a God who loved this world so much. that he gave his only begotten son to redeem us and to give us a life, abundant life through him. The image came to my mind that Jesus was at this point of no return. And I remember it being talked about for aircraft pilots that there is this place that's called a point of no return. You can't turn back because you've gone too far to turn back. Or if you're taking off, you've gone too far down the runway, it's not going to slow, slow down and stop by the time you get to the end of it. If you try, once you've passed that point, and, and Jesus passed that point of no return as he said yes to the calling that the Father placed on him.
and he went forth and completed his mission courageously with the adversary continually at him. And because he did, the likes of you and I have gained a victory. It's not of our making. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift that he's given to us in the living and resurrected Christ. So be it. Amen.